Hey, a pleasant good day, everyone. This is Sports Fan News. I'm Joe Boric, and this is just going to be a quick reaction to the Morgan Riley extension and what it means for the Toronto Maple Leafs going forward. Um, a great article was written on Leaf Nation by Nick Barden that was saying about how Morgan Riley's just one of those cream of the crop leaders instilled since they drafted him from 2012. One of those guys that came in and immediately made an immediate impact, even more so than Rasmus Sandin, who's made an immediate impact, but not to the same degree as Riley, where this guy just came in and immediately established himself as a leader in the force. But there are guys, he's getting paid 7-5, he took a pay cut to stay there, but it is going to be interesting with this team's cap, obviously, in future years, how they're going to work this all out with William Nylander, who expires the same year as Austin Matthews, 23-24. John Tavares goes to 24-25 at 11 mil, and then Mitch Marner goes at 10-903 to 24-25. So now they have a lot of bigger contracts. You also have Rasmus Sandin, who's coming into an RFA next season at 22-23 season. So you're going to have to make some decisions here. And then if Jack Campbell has a very good year this year, you have him at 165. You would think he would go up in price a little bit if you want to keep him with Peter Morazic tandem. So there's other things to consider, but this was a very wise and very smart decision by the Maple Leafs to focus on Morgan Riley. And it's because of really <clears throat> a lot of, one, the player and the great player he is on the ice, but also the fact that he's already your assistant captain and... I would say once John Tavares, if he ever does move on by the time his contract's expired, even though Morgan Riley then would be at 30 going on 31 season, just because of how everyone from reading, when you read anything from Leafs Nation articles or you read anything from Leafs reported, this guy's always been regarded as one of the best guys, one of the best leaders, one of the best tools on and off the ice of any defenseman in the league. So you want to prioritize keeping someone like that that's just so good and squeaky clean on the ice, but then's able to do whatever you need for the team as a leader off the ice, plus get you 50-some points in a full season when he actually is going off and has a great season. Then got 72 points, of course, in 2018 and 19. And then we had these shortened seasons of 47, 55 games where he still did well. And now he already has five points on the five assist total in nine games. So Morgan Riley's one of the best both way defenseman, very good offensively inclined, but he can shut you down and stop you as well and has been getting consistently better as that. As his time went on, this was a very smart and wise move and a very good strategic move by the Toronto Maple Leafs as well because as the great writer for Leafs Nation, Nick Barden, said, they were able to get him on a discount. There's no way Morgan Riley on the open market with being able to get 50-some points as a defenseman while playing a good defensive game in a full season would have only got 7-5. So they took a discount for him. He has a good eight-year deal now, so he has the extra year. They were able to make what people thought was impossible during the season possible as Kyle Dubas and his uh, agent J.P. Barry got together and made the deal. And Riley said, every day that I've been here since 2012 has been first class, and that's the standard around here. It's a pretty special place to be. So you can tell. And then the writer said he's a leader on and off the ice with how he conducts himself, and he's incredibly royal, loyal. That's why he took the pay cut. He definitely would have gotten more money, as Barden says, on the open market. So in conclusion, when it comes to... Oh, also, Keith on Riley said, David Alta tweeted, there's a reason why the organization has gone through a number of changes over the years, but he's the one guy that's lasted. So that's a huge vote of confidence to the guy. That's a guy that also makes it seem like if John Tavares does ever move on, whether it's once his contract expires or in one of the final years in the offseason via a trade before 2024-25 season, I would say he's the biggest lead to be a captain. Obviously, going forward, since Nylander and Matthews expire the same year, it'll be interesting to see what they do with those guys. Do they keep the 10-9-0-3 of Mitch Marner, put more into Matthews, and then keep Nylander because he's at 6-something and would probably only go up to more 8 value and not the 10 9 3 of Mourner there. So there's different decisions to make going in the future for in terms of cap structure for the Toronto Maple Leafs. But for exactly what you need on a team to create a winning culture, this was a very, very smart move. The guy wants to be there, as we could tell from his quote. And then Keith, he's the guy when he said there's been a number of changes over the years. He's the one guy that lasted. That's for a reason because 
he's the pinnacle of not just an on-the-ice player you want to have, but an off-the-ice player you want to have. So this was a great move by the Leafs, very smart, to extend Morgan Riley for the eight years for 7-5, which is a bargain each year. And also in the future, if the Leafs, are, say, do win a cup in not the before the tailback end of that deal, you could easily move Morgan Riley on this deal if you're trying to bring in younger guys at a certain point of that deal, too. This is a very easy deal to move for a defenseman like him at 7-5. So everyone have a great and pleasant day. This has just been a reaction to the Morgan Riley signing and how it affects the Leafs going forward, but also how it's just very brilliant to keep a guy that's a pinnacle on and off the ice that just has the potential to be a future captain for you around. Peace out, everybody. Stay safe. Subscribe down below. Run the easy-to-use widget up above if you enjoy the content. Peace.